What's up YouTube, HTX Scat here. And before we get into this video, first thing I wanna say is thank you guys very much. We finally reached a thousand subscribers, so huge shout out to you guys. Next goal is 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, and so forth. So let's continue to grow this channel and thank you guys for your continued support. Today we're gonna to talk about something that I've been waiting to get done to my car so that I can finally make this video. Uh, it only makes sense to do it after it's done, well, and not before because I can't give you my honest opinion. But today we're gonna to talk about should you bag your car? A lot of people are on the fence about this. Some say do it, some say no, don't do it and you're ruining your car. So today we're gonna to talk about some pros and cons and some things that I've experienced with the bags that have made me you know, not regret this decision at all. Before diving into this video, I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around of the car. I'm gonna show you guys the trunk here first. So first things first, probably the most noticeable thing about the air ride suspension is the way it looks. And that to me is a huge pro to getting your car on bags. And the reason why I did this is one, because before I had the bags, my car was on Eibach Springs. And now I don't have anything against springs or anything like that, but you know, the springs didn't settle like I wanted them to or expected them to. So for a while I was on the fence of, should I just go coilovers? Should I save the money and do bags? So obviously you can see, I decided to just do the bags and I'm loving it ever since. Now I've had these on here for about two weeks and I can tell you that this is probably the best decision I've made with this car. I mean, just pulling up to a car show and airing your car completely out is probably one of the best feelings just because, you know, the looks that you get, people, some people aren't even expecting you to do that. So just doing this, parking, and just, well, we like to say, hard parked. This right here is just amazing. Just the, the tuck of it, the way it just drops down, it looks amazing. So I'm gonna show you guys right now what it looks like when the car goes up and then when it goes back down. So just pulling up to the show and doing that is probably one of my favorite things about this. And that never gets old. I can tell you that will never, ever, ever get old doing that. Now, the second pro that I've, you know, experienced in like, like night and day experience with the bags is the ride quality. Now, when I bought this car almost two years ago, um, after about two months of owning it, I put the car on springs. I'm sure the stock ride quality is great, but I don't remember it. Um, the spring quality was a little bit stiffer, it was a little bit more, you know, harder on the road. So the stiffness of the springs were okay, but I wanted something a little bit more, more dailyable, more drivable, you know, because I take this car to work every day. I go there, there, there. I go everywhere with this car. So, you know, I wanted something that was a little bit more, you know, daily friendly. The ride quality between the air ride suspension and the springs that I had on this car before is a complete night and day. And even when my girlfriend got in the car for the first time after it was originally bagged, she was like, wow, because we hit a pothole, you know, stuff like that, you know, bumps and stuff like that in the road. And the way it feels is completely different than what it felt like before. So that was probably the most noticeable difference between the air ride and the springs. Now I can't speak too much about other air ride companies such as Airlift and other ones that are out there because I haven't had those and I don't know too much about them and I haven't done really you know much research on those companies. But the Accuware ELO suspension setup that I have, the reason why I chose it is because it has these things called ride height sensors and that's basically what the E-level is. So the problem that I was facing before as well on the springs was that if I were to put people in this car or if I were to put you know a trunk full of you know luggage or something like that you know the back end of the car does drop more because of all the weight that's in there and it would cause the 315s and the 10 and a half inch rim to not really work well with the fenders so all the inner wheel wells and stuff like that would have you know some rub marks and stuff like that on it just because of me loading the car up with either luggage or people or stuff like that so with the Accuware E-Level it basically it has ride height sensors so each bag is programmed to a certain psi so even if you put you know 100 pounds of sand in the trunk and four people in the car the ride height is still going to be the exact same as you set it to because it it, it senses that there's stuff in the car there's senses that there's stuff weighing down the bags and just increases the height so it backs it gets back to where it belongs so that was a huge plus to me unfortunately i do not have those set up so i can't really give too much information about that because those aren't set up on my car yet hopefully we'll be able to get those done this week um, reason being those aren't set up is because we bagged this car overnight so that would have taken a little bit more time to do so we put that off 
to when we had a little bit more time to get that set up because you know you have to choose where you want the sensors now another thing i love about the acura e-level is the controller now if i turn the car on you see the controller will power on and usually these four uh these four and these four won't be red the reason why they're red is because the ride height sensors aren't set up right now so it's kind of telling you hey something's wrong but to air the car up now, I have to push. So these, this control panel right here controls the back of the car. So this is front left up, this is front right up, this is front left down, front right down, and so forth with this one, which, is, which controls the back. Normally you have these three, this three, two, one right here that you usually use, and this is basically your preset. So you can set, you know, an all the way up, a ride height, and then like a pulling into the show height, and then this button right here puts you all the way down. So I'm not able to use these right now because these are really what works you know, hand in hand with the E-Level itself. Right now I have it set up kind of like a switch speed setup and that's basically no ride height sensors, no presets. You just can really go up and go down. And that's all I really do right now, but hopefully this week we'll be able to get the rest of it set up. It's kind of windy out here, so I kind of got to find the right spot to shoot this. So um, now we're gonna talk about the cons of getting an air ride suspension. And there really isn't many, but there is a few that, you know, might sway people from not getting it. And number one, probably the biggest, most obvious thing is cost. So with the Acura E-Level, I have, I'm gonna explain to you guys what I have as well. So first thing, I have a, a Endo VT tank and the Endo VT, the VT part of that stands for valve tank. So there's an Endo T, which is a Endo tank. And then there's an Endo VT, which is what I have right here, which is a valve tank. And there's gonna soon be an Endo CVT tank. So the CVT stands for compressor valve tank. So now what's built into this Endo VT tank are the valves. So normally, well not necessarily normally, but before the Endo VT tank, there was the Endo T tank and it would cause you to have to have the valves outside of the tank. So you have another little component that would usually sit about here or somewhere else in the trunk, wherever you choose to have it. But that would also be a third thing that would sit in your trunk. So right now I just have the tank and the compressors. So with eliminating space with the Endo VT tank, I have a tank and two compressors. So these are the Vire 444s. There's also the Vire 480s, which is a step above these, but there's not really much difference in those. So I just went ahead and go with the 444s. I got two of them in black and um, they fill that five gallon tank up pretty fast. So with the cost of the Acura E-Level and the stuff that I got, it'll run you, you know, about $3,600, $3,650, maybe even a little bit more you know buying the complete setup so that's the e-level controller with the you know the management system with the ride height sensors and everything that gets you the endo vt tank right here and then it gets you these two compressors as well as the universal airbags that go basically where the springs used to go so with all that it's about 3600 dollars, and that's not including install so for a basic install like this, it'll probably, probably run you anywhere for it to be done correctly. Let me just say that. For everything to be done correctly, it'll probably run you about twelve to $1,500 for a basic setup. And I mean, that's not cheap. So getting a whole $3,600 setup, and then on top of that having to pay twelve to $1,500 to install it, it can cost you a little bit of money, but is it really worth it? So another con to air ride suspension, it might bother some and it might not bother others. And it used to bother me and I'm not gonna lie, but it doesn't bother me anymore. And I'm gonna basically show you guys what I mean. So coming around to the back of the car, you can hear this noise. And that noise is basically the compressors refilling the tank with air so that I can air up and I can head out as soon as I get in the car. Now, when you're in the car and the trunk is closed and you know, you're driving down the road and you're listening to music on the daily, you don't really hear this thing filling up from inside the car, you know, because of the road noise, the exhaust note, and also the music. But when you are stopped and you even close the trunk, you can still hear it a little bit. It's a little bit more noticeable in person, but when the trunk is closed, it's not really as noticeable. But when you open the trunk, you can hear these gigantic compressors basically refilling that pretty large tank. And now this only goes for about, I'd say 15 to 25 seconds at most. Um, and the good thing about the 444s and the reason why I have two of them is because it fills that big tank up a lot quicker. So if I went with anything like a 380 or anything a little bit smaller, this tank, those compressors will still be going. And as you guys can hear, they've completely shut off. So doing a quick recap, so far with the pros we have, ride quality, we have the Acura E-Level ride height sensors, and we have the way it looks. For the cons, we have cost, 
we have compressor noise, and the last thing is trunk space. Now, a lot of people say, do I have to sacrifice my trunk space if you decide to have a complete show car, which is kind of the route that I'm going in if you haven't noticed by now. So I do plan on doing a few things like changing this, you know, the floors up and maybe even the sides and, and the top and stuff. Um, I am gonna meet with Goldmine Graphics today to get this tank wrapped and uh, switch it up a little bit. So you guys stay tuned for that. That's probably the first step to, you know, getting the trunk done. Sorry for the wind noise if you guys can't hear me. But, um, so Goldmine and I are gonna, you know, sit down and collab with some stuff today um, and figure out what we can do with the tank, which is gonna be pretty awesome. So overall, I say yes. Y-E-S, yes, a huge yes to bagging your car. I mean, you can't beat the way this looks, you can't beat ride quality, and you can't beat height. Now, there's no way to get this low. You can get coilovers that help you tuck, but you know, this is tucked to the point where I can't even turn the wheel. I couldn't even drive forward like this. And you know, you don't, there's, there's no other way to get this low. And I'm back here tucking 315s, and I mean, it still looks damn good fitment is awesome so all in all i want to say thank you guys for watching this video um i hope this kind of helped you guys out in the decision if you should bag your car or not it's just a few things that are like yeah that that wouldn't bother me yeah that might bother me but this look right here slammed to the floor might overpower all the rest of those options that you are weighing so thank you guys for watching this video make sure you guys subscribe for more i have some awesome content coming soon because we will be heading to las vegas for sema but he's getting a dodge demon He's waiting a little bit longer than the rest of the people because he's getting in a different color um, than most people are getting theirs. You know, maybe go mango, white, yellow, orange, you know, destroyer gray, whatever color, you know, that are, you know, colors are already out there, those are coming first. So the new colors like the F8 green, the indigo blue, colors like that that are new to Dodge for 2018, well, not necessarily new, but that are coming back in 2018 you know, those people have to wait a little bit longer for those demons. So I'm gonna wait with my buddy and hopefully he gets his sooner than later and we're gonna do some launches and reviews and zero to 60 times and all that good fun stuff. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more. Make sure you guys subscribe because it's only gonna get better from here. Peace.